Today on the IoT Show, uh, we are bringing Pericles from the IoT Central team to talk about how to connect devices, IoT devices that might not be IP based or might not be directly connected to the internet, but are using a network such as LoRa, uh, the Sings Network, Sigfox or others up to Azure IoT and Azure IoT Central. Hi everyone, this is Olivier on the IoT Show. Thanks for watching. Today we have Pericles with us. Hi Pericles, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. Okay, <laughs> so um, Pericles is uh, in the Azure IoT team and he's here to demo something new, which is a bridge for some of these devices that connect with these weird technologies like Sigfox, LoRa and so forth into IoT Central in a very simple way. First, how about you introduce yourself to our viewers? Who are you? What are you doing? People know uh, you're an sure. IT Central team, but they might want to have some more details. Yeah, uh, so I'm Pericles, and I work on the Azure IoT team. Uh, more specifically, uh, I'm a software engineer on IoT Central. Uh, and yeah, today I'm here to talk about Device Bridge. Okay, Device Bridge, that's the name of this, that's what, an open source project, right? Yeah, correct. That's a fully open source project. Uh, and it's completely, uh, as I'll show later, it's completely deployed to your subscription and you have total control over it. And you're going to show us that in a minute. Yes. But, uh, so what kind of network should we expect? So we have IoT devices out there. Some exactly. of them are connected directly to the internet using Wi-Fi or GSM mm -hmm. chips, whatnot. But more of these IoT devices are connected using a, a low consumption, low energy you know, technology such as LoRa, Sigfox, or other ones, right? Yeah. Uh, exactly. And so I think the goal of this project, as I understand it, is to make it super simple to connect these existing solutions into IoT Central, correct? Yeah, exactly. So you have many of these IoT platforms, of mm -hmm. these IoT clouds, yeah. that um, they have big sets of devices and they allow you to transmit device data through HTTP calls. Okay. So every time a device message gets into their cloud, they transmit, retransmit that message uh, okay. to some endpoint in the web. Got it. Uh, and in this case, uh, what Device Bridge does, it, it gets, collects these messages and mm -hmm. transmits them to your IoT Central application. Okay. And so you're saying cloud to cloud, basically, right? So yeah, you have cloud to cloud. So what are the solutions that we can bridge today with that open source project? Yeah, uh, so today uh, you can bridge, like I said, any IoT cloud that supports transmitting device data through HTTP. Okay. Or or any other device that supports transmitting data through HTTP. Okay, yeah. but each of them expose data in a specific format of theirs, right? So uh, that's the thing. So we deploy. Uh, so what is Device Bridge? Device Bridge uh, is uh, an Azure function, mm -hmm. completely deployed, deployed through your subscription, and where okay. you have total control. So we accept data in a specific format, in a mm -hmm. fixed format, and you can change the the code of the Azure function a little bit to accept whatever format you need. Okay, and we have a, like kind of a already pre-baked samples for people to understand what these transformation of data looks like. Yeah, uh, actually, let, let's go through the whole process yeah, of how you get from zero to running. Let's on do this it. Thing. I love it. Uh, so uh, we have here the repository for Device Bridge, which okay. you can find the link uh, in the video description. Yep. Uh, so when you come to the repository, first thing you're going to see is a deploy to Azure button. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, this solution lives entirely in your subscription. You have total control over it. Okay. Right. Uh, so if you click that button. We should be taken to the Azure portal. Okay. Uh, and the template will load in a few seconds. So, what this is loading is a, a preset template that's going to deploy the whole solution into your subscription. Okay. Right? Uh, and the goal is to make it very simple for you to do it. It's like uh, very quick, a couple minutes, you should be able to set it up. Okay. So when you come here uh, to the deployment page, uh, you have to fill this form to mm -hmm. get the solution deployed to your subscription. Okay. So we're going to use a new resource group. Okay. So I'm going to call it. Could it be a good practice to host it in the same like resource group as your IT Central application? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you can group things together and have them together, so it makes it easier for you to manage. Okay. Definitely. Uh, so let's call it. Let's give it a name for this resource group. Uh, now, the two uh, important pieces of data here mm -hmm. are scope ID and IoT Central SAS key. Okay. Right? So, what this does is this piece of information allows you to, allows your devices to connect to your IoT Central application. Okay. Right? And uh, these resemble the device provisioning service information. So, basically, exactly. we would be leveraging what's behind IoT Central exactly. to provision these devices which are in that network. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. under the hood, what Device Bridge does it is 
it gets this information, this, uh, this SAS key and this okay. scope ID, okay. and it uses the device provisioning services uh, APIs okay. to actually register the device in a transparent way for you. You don't need to worry about it. As long as you give us the info, we do it for you in a mm. transparent way. So that mean, does that mean it's going to map every single of your devices in your realm of IoT network into a device in IoT Central? Exactly. So one-to-one. -one. Uh, exactly. You don't need to manually create devices. You don't need to manually provision them. Okay. We're going to do everything transparently for you. OK. Love it. Yeah. Uh, so. This information can be easily found. Uh, so yeah. we have all the instructions on the repository. You can okay. find everything on the README. And this information, this connection information, you can find uh, in your IoT Central application. Okay. So here we have uh, an application that we set up earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can find this information under uh, administration section, device connection. Got it. Okay. Right. Uh, so, okay. So here in device connection, we have all the info we need to connect your devices to IoT Central. Okay. Uh, so first, the scope ID. Uh, easy enough. We can copy it over. Okay. Uh, then we have our primary SAS key. Okay. And don't try and read this text on the screen here because we're going to kill that app anyways just after the exactly. demo. Exactly. <laughs> 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 okay. And there you go. There you go. Uh, so it's deploying the resources through mm -hmm. your Azure subscription, as I said. Yeah. And uh, I noticed one thing, and uh, I already did use this way of deploying ARM templates through the portal. There's this button at the bottom that says Purchase. So the funny thing is that it's going to deploy the services, but then you're going to pay depending on what these services are doing and your consumption, right? So exactly. and sometimes it's free. Some of these services exactly. are. Uh, but I guess here we're using an Azure function. So you're gonna, uh, it's going to be pay as you go on that function, right? Yeah. So uh, we're going to start with a consumption plan. Yep. Uh, but we describe uh, in the repository, we can describe how you can change it for your needs. You can edit this template for your needs. So one, thing, one of the things you can do, you, you can run on a uh, consumption plan, which yeah. is yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, charge as you go. Yeah. Uh, and it supports like uh, a bunch of executions for free. Mm -hmm. But you may want to, depending on your scaling needs, you may, need, you may want to change to an app service plan, okay. with, which has uh, dedicated compute resources. So you were sure that uh, you'll be sure that you can scale uh, that that solution as much as you need. Okay, makes sense, right? Uh, but yeah, we have like a, a big session on the repository on how to do it, how to customize the template okay. uh, to do that, and to have uh, an estimate of the costs. Okay, right? That's always important. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's being deployed. Uh, okay. Let's see what's being deployed here. Um, so. Our resources should show up in a second. OK. Uh, so it's deploying a couple things under the hood. So first thing, it's deploying a key vault. Mm -hmm. And that is to make sure that we keep the key, the, the device connection key that yeah. you're giving us, we keep it safe. OK. Right? Makes, so makes only this Azure function will have access to this key. So okay. it's, it. it's completely protected. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, completely transparent. You yeah. don't need to worry about where it's going to be stored or where it's going to be managed. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, as we already mentioned, uh, it deploys an Azure function, okay. which is the core of device breach, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so this Azure function, what it does is it gets these HTTP calls, uh, yeah. these HTTP messages containing device telemetry or device measurements mm -hmm. from other mm -hmm. clouds, like Sigfox, Particle, yeah. things that work. Yeah. And they transmit it right to your IoT Central application. Okay. Right? So this. Azure function is the core of the solution. Okay. Right? Uh, so it's done, it's deployed. We can uh, look up the resources that there are now in our subscription. Uh, so as I said, uh, we have here a key vault and we yep. have our Azure function. Yeah. Right? And you have the storage that always comes with the function. Exactly. Need, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so if you look now under functions, you should have a newly created uh, IoT C integration function. Okay. Right? So, okay. So this is the code for the solution. And as I said, uh, what you see is what you get, and you can change the the code on the okay. screen if you yeah. want. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. change totally. it to suit your needs. Okay. Right? Uh, so, one uh, one interesting thing is this is an, a JavaScript function, mm -hmm. uh, and for that to run, uh, one quick step that we need to do is to install the packages. That okay. it needs to work. Yeah, so the, MTM, the npm install. Yeah. So okay. you have to do an npm install. And again, the structures in the repository cover all that. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can complete all steps. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so once that is done, you have like your solution ready to go. You can even test it from the portal if you want, right? Okay. Uh, so 
what this deploys, what we just done here, deploys a generic version of device bridge. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, in the repository, we have uh, the format of data that we accept. Okay. So if you send data in this format, we are going to transmit it right to your URIT. Right. So the, the, default, the default function is just like a path through of the data, right? Exactly. So if you send the right format from the get go in your HTTP request to trigger the function, that's what's going to be sent. Exactly. Got it. Sometimes, as you said, you have a different data format, you have yeah. different needs. And that's OK. Uh, so in the repository, you have included many samples uh -huh. on how to connect different uh, clouds using device bridge, okay. how to do small changes to connect different uh, clouds. So here we have an example for particle, what you need mm -hmm. to add, like this is small snippet. Okay. Uh, then we have how to connect Sigfox devices. Mm -hmm. And by last, what we are going to be using today, we have instructions on how to use uh, the Things Network devices. Yes, right? and we have some of the hardware there. Exactly. So I've noticed that all of these networks usually they have a webhook, right? Connection. Exactly. So basically, on their on, on our side, you deploy the bridge. You have your IoT central application. On their side, on the other side, you basically just have just have to connect the webhook to the Azure Function trigger, right? Exactly. And I'll show you in a second how that is easy to do. Okay, I'm just uh, jumping. I'm okay. <laughs> uh, so. As I said, we have all the instructions you need yep. to a customized device bridge to connect to the yep. Things Network. Mm -hmm. And it's as much as copying this code snippet to uh -huh. your Azure function. Mm -hmm. And we have a pre-deployed Azure function here, a pre-deployed instance of device bridge that we already uh, changed okay. to, to connect to the Things Network. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are going to be using it today uh, to connect this uh, small Things Network okay. node. So what do we have here? Uh, so this is uh, a device that connects to the Things Network. Okay. And it's a node, and it's connecting through this gateway here. So for those who don't know the Things Network, so between device and the gateway, it's LoRa, right? So that's yeah, exactly. this like low um, low consumption, low energy, um, super popular network for connecting devices. So this is a LoRa gateway. There's internet. LoRa to the device. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So the device is very low power. The heavy lifting is being done in the cloud. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and here we have an Arduino device, a Nuno device that okay. is also connected uh, to the Things Network. Okay. So as I said, we have uh, this instance of device bridge that we set up earlier mm -hmm. to use the Things Network. Yeah. So we, here we have the same Azure function uh, that is going to load in a second. And something else we have here is a Things Network application. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's the other end uh, of the pipe. Okay. So we have a Things Network application where these devices are transmitting to, okay. uh, and we want to connect these devices. When devices that show up in this Things Network application to mm -hmm. show up in our uh, IoT Central application. Okay, makes right? sense. Yes. Uh, so, as you said, all you need to do is uh, many other clouds like yeah. this one have this integration section yeah. where you can create a new integration. Right. Okay. And today we, as as we said, we are going to be using an HTTP integration. Okay. So I would expect in the future, so we'll talk a bit more about what exactly is supported today, but I would mm -hmm. expect maybe to have a bit more than just the webhook in the future, right? Uh, yeah, we yeah. are actually uh, exploiting our type of cell connections. Yeah. Uh, but right now, webhook uh, is, let's say, what we started with. And it's the most because, common. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's so widely supported. Yeah. Yeah, right? Makes sense. Uh, even if you're not com connected to one of those clouds, if you yeah. want just a uh, quick start to Azure IoT Central, mm -hmm. you can, as I said, test on the portal. You yeah. can send a, a post uh, message to yes. device bridge and, yes. get and see your data on IoT Central. That makes sense. Right. It's uh, interesting usage. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, OK, so all I need to do is give it a unique name okay. to this integration. And the most impor important piece of data here is this URL. So this URL is where is the data from the device going to be sent to once it arrives in the Things Network yep, Cloud, yep. right? Uh, and the, the, the URL you're going to use is the Azure function. Yeah, right. Makes sense. Uh, so this is the URL that triggers our Azure function mm -hmm. for device bridge. Uh, we are going to paste it here. Uh, then, uh, yeah, we're going to send a post request. Yeah. We need no authorization, and that's yeah. because the Azure function endpoint, the URL, is already protected by a function key. Uh, so everything is uh, secure here. Okay. Uh, and so we don't need any custom headers. And by last, we select uh, which device keys uh, we want to use, and that's a, okay. a Things Network concept. Okay. Right. Uh, then we hit Create, and uh, it should start working. That's it. So now, uh, let's bring up the logs into our, yeah, okay, so uh, data is starting showing up. And at this point, we should already see these devices showing up in our RIT Central application. As in populating new device? Exactly. Do you have to have a device type, or how does that work from here? Exactly. So uh, 
IoT Central has never seen these devices, yep. correct? So it doesn't know the, the template that they use. Yep. Uh, so for that, we have this section called unassociated devices. Mm, right. Okay. Uh, so these unassociated devices are any devices that IoT Central, uh, so they showed up to IoT Central, they have the right credentials, okay. but you still don't know the template. Right? Okay, so you cannot actually translate what they're telling you into the graphs and the maps and exactly. so on into your Exactly, so you can yeah, see your sense. measurements in a nice format, yep, your events, sense. your states and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, uh, so all you need to do now is associate this device okay. to a template, right? I like the name, Frogman. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, so here we have where I have uh, Things Network template. That you created just before. We created uh, just before okay, uh, this sense. demo. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just associated this device to it. Okay. And you get a message saying uh, association was successful. Okay. And now, uh, when you come to this device template, mm -hmm. you can see the, the new device there. Okay, and makes sense. And all you needed to do was push a button to associate it. Yes, yeah. that's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, so uh, now if you go into the device, mm -hmm. Uh, so here you can see uh, all the measurements it has, the states, and the events. Okay. And in a few seconds, we should be see data uh, coming in uh, from the things that work into our Azure. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, so all we right. got data. Telemetry. Uh, so we got telemetry from this device here into your IoT Central application. Okay, so we were saying that, um, I was actually saying earlier on that we'll see more features coming. Right now, what we're seeing is telemetry flowing into IoT Central, right? Exactly. There's more than just telemetry. In the future, you'll be able to actually do the, the setting, the configuration of your devices from IoT Central, uh, and it will definitely depend on you know, the type of network you're using, because they're using different ways of interacting with the devices in their network, right? Okay, yeah, so this is, uh, is something we're exploring. Yeah. Uh, so that's a very important point. Uh, this today device bridges a one-way uh, communication. Yeah. It comes through the, whatever cloud you're using into IoT Central. You get yeah. telemetry, you get states and events, mm -hmm. and you can build rules and analytics on top of that data. Yeah. Uh, but today settings and commands will not work. Yeah. And we are exploring how to do that in the future. Yeah. Right? We're exploring a solution for that. I, I like that. And as a matter of fact, because the, the, the bridge is actually a GitHub repo, people can just you know chime in. Exactly. File an issue, propose a solution, contribute code as well, right? Exactly. If they have new examples, you have new ways of doing it that they think are good, they can actually go on GitHub and collaborate with you guys. Exactly. Like I said, uh, this uh, deploys a generic version of the device bridge. In the repository, you have many instructions on how to connect these uh, three networks. But if you have a good sample, a good yep. usage, or steps to use another uh, network that you're using, yep. you are, uh, feel free to submit it to us. Like okay. open an issue, uh, we are open to suggestions and feedback on the code. Love it. Well, you guys know what you have to do. Check out the links down there. Go to the GitHub repo. Talk to Pericles down there and the other devs who are working on that bridge for IoT Central <laughs> yeah. and devices. And uh, thanks for watching the IoT show. Hope to see you soon again for more demos. Okay, thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Bye.